everywhere in the body that we have blood vessels. Most people are familiar with the blood vessels. We also have lymphatic vessels running alongside those blood vessels. And the lymphatic vessels are responsible for picking up the, the waste products, the toxins in the body, all the bits and pieces that we want to get out of the body. So it's essentially our waste management system. Just a little taster of what is coming up on the show. But first, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel. And also tell your friends and family about this podcast. Please let us know in the comments if you would like to hear any particular topic in relation to sleep or health, then I will create a show especially for you just for asking the question. So let's get on with the show. Welcome everybody back to the Empowering Family Health Podcast. I have another incredible guest with me today, Aideen Schwepp. Did I say that right, Aideen? Aideen you Schwepp? did. Brilliant. Yeah, Brilliant. yeah, exactly. I am really, really looking forward to this interview because I don't think I've had anybody on, Aideen, um, talking to us all about the lymphatic system and lymphedemia and all of that. We're going to get into all of that area. Um, but first, I just want to read out your bio uh, so everyone gets a little bit of background about what it is that you do. So Aideen has been treating conditions of the lymphatic system in her clinical practice for 14 years now. That's a very long time. So she's very well experienced. She's on a one woman mission to address the information gap around cancer treatment and its role in causing lymphedemia, plus all the things that you can do at home to care for your lymphatic system. So we're going to be talking all about that, the lymphatic system, lymphedemia, why you should look after your lymphatic system. And uh, Aideen is also a personal trainer and a yoga instructor as well. So she really utilizes all these um, areas that she's qualified in to really help uh, her clients and, um, you know, people at home. Just, you know, and I love what she's doing, the, the at home care as well. So Aideen, before we dive into, I want to get your story, but before we dive into your story, can you just mm -hmm. explain what the lymphatic system is and why it's so important, why we do need to look after. Just explain a little bit about that first. Sure. Okay, I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. Everywhere in the body that we have blood vessels, most people are familiar with the blood vessels, we also have lymphatic vessels running alongside those blood vessels. And the lymphatic vessels are responsible for picking up the, the waste products, the toxins in the body, all the bits and pieces that we want to get out of the body. So it's essentially our waste management system. And it's also got a huge function in our immune system. I always refer to it as the engine of the immune system. Love it. Because all of the fluid that the lymphatic system mops up, it travels through the lymphatic vessels and towards the lymph nodes in different areas of the body. And the lymph nodes filter that fluid and will then identify, for example, if there's a bacteria or a virus that needs to be fought off. And that way, the body gets the message to, okay, we need you to produce more of these cells to fight off this invader. So it's really, really this vital system for our immunity, for, for making sure that we fight off disease, and also for keeping the body healthy and clean and getting all of the waste products out that we produce 24-7. You know, we're always producing waste. Our cells are always producing waste. So that waste has to be removed from the body. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a really great example. And so it's like effectively it's the engine of the immune system. I love that because our immune system is our number one protector. And at all mm -hmm. times we need to protect, be protecting ourselves because we're always exposed to toxins in our environment, but also our cells produce byproducts as a result of, you know, their daily activities that, that our cells do and, and what they provide, yeah. energy and all that sort of thing. Um, so... So the immune system and the lymphatic system, obviously, that is involved in the detoxification, um, super important that we get all the, the rubbish out of our system. Um, and exactly. as I said, the um, you know, and all our cells can work optimally when we have a clean, functional body. It's like if you've got a dirty kitchen, you you can't really work optimally in your kitchen if you've got dirt. No, Do you know the the example I always give. I love visuals, so the example I always give is: imagine a vase of cut flowers. And the water that's in that vase, if you don't change the water and you keep the flowers in there for a week, two weeks, it goes really dirty and full of bacteria and fungus and all sorts of things. 
So if you can imagine your lymphatic system in the same way, just like you said there with the the dishes in the sink, you can't have that inside your body. We just don't see it. So if anything becomes stagnant, we really don't want that. We want to be getting everything out of there and keeping it fresh and cleansed. Yeah, so ultimately we're keeping all the, if we're not if we're not detoxifying, if we're not getting the lymph moving, ultimately it's a breeding ground really, isn't it? For, yeah, yeah. For, yeah, all the, the bad the bad things. Um, so so I want to bring in your story, Aideen, so your backstory, because it's very, very important and significant to the work that you're doing today. So tell us the background, why you're doing this work and why you love and why you need help in really promoting um, this disinformation and getting it out there to help people. Sure, okay. So I originally um, graduated from university with a degree in international business with languages, in fact. But I always, I worked for about three years. I lasted about three years in that kind of uh, industry and environment. I always had an interest in health and well-being. And as soon as I was starting to earn my own money, I started doing courses, weekend courses in massage, uh, aromatherapy, all sorts of things that I was interested in. And people started to tell me, you have really good hands. Why aren't you doing this profession? Well, I already have a career. Um, But I eventually went on to do the professional qualifications just for fun because I'm a nerd like that. (laughs) And eventually, uh, I loved yoga as well. My mom trained as a yoga instructor. So I then went on to study yoga as well to become an instructor. And I left very quickly. I think it was only three years. I left the banking world to set up my own business and I had started with massage and with yoga. So my mom then, she um, had a malignant melanoma and she had to have surgery. It was quite advanced. She ignored it for a long time. Please don't ignore your moles. People go and get them checked. Um, So she had to have surgery, had a good chunk of her calf muscle removed along with with the melanoma. And a year later, she had to have some lymph nodes removed from the groin. This isn't a great situation because if you a year later still have signs of the cancer there that they need to take lymph nodes out, the prognosis is usually considered to be quite bad. I didn't realize that at the time. She kept it very, you know, we don't, uh, you know, stress is only going to make this worse. We don't believe when the doctors say that this is just going to get worse and worse and worse because we are going to do something about it. We're going to meditate, do our yoga, change our diet, whatever else. So I decided at that stage, um, she developed lymphedema after the lymph nodes were removed from the groin. So what happens is that waste management system, think of it as our sewage pipes. Now there's a part of it broken and missing. So the sewage just goes out into that drainage area in the body and she developed swelling in her leg. So she went back to find out, you know, what's happening. Most people think is the cancer coming back? You know, it's quite worrying for people. And she was at that time told, you know, you should be grateful that we got rid of your cancer. Go home. Oh, my God. And this doesn't seem to have changed that much. I know that's going to ruffle a lot of feathers, but I'm very passionate about this. Um, It doesn't seem to have changed that much. This is about 20 years ago. And still, I get people that would come into my clinic and say, I was just kind of told it's not that bad or come back when you've got loads of swelling. There's no swelling there at the moment or whatever it might be. Or they just told me there's nothing you can do about it. So there is a massive area for improvement there. I'm not going to say anything really critical. (laughs) <laughs> a massive area for improvement so I decided at that stage right my mom found out what's happening it's called lymphedema which essentially means swelling due to pooling of lymphatic fluid which is called lymph and she found a therapist in Malahide and had an initial course of what we call an intensive course of treatments manual lymphatic drainage with compression bandaging and she learned the home care stuff to do at home by herself as well So I said, you know what, I already have the background in massage. I'm going to try and train in this therapy so that my mom always has somebody in the family who can do this for her because you're looking after this for the rest of your life. It's not going to go away. The lymph nodes don't grow back. So it was a bit controversial at the time because I wasn't a nurse or a physiotherapist, Mm. but I, yeah, but I wanted to do it mostly for personal reasons, the same way I started with the massage and the yoga. So I did the first stage of the training and the trainers were delighted with me and they were like, we were, you know, we weren't quite sure how this was going to go, but we're delighted. You have very good hands, really good conscious uh, consciousness of the body. And um, so they were delighted and said, go on ahead and go and do the advanced training. And so I did and I qualified almost top of my class, but not ah. quite, <laughs> almost. Um, and that was it. And in the 
I think it's 20 years, it could be 18, around about 20 years. In that time, uh, well, I qualified 14 years ago. My mom's journey started about 20 years ago. Um, so in that time, she's only needed my help about twice, can you believe? Wow. Because she does all of the home care stuff herself at home and keeps on top of this. And that's why I'm so passionate about the home care stuff. How's and I'm not one of... How's her health now as a result of looking after Grant? Her? Yeah, she's good. She's good. She keeps on top of it. She does all of her self-lymphatic drainage. Usually every day, I need to check in with her and see what she's up to these days. But, you know, for the first 10 years, say, she would have done a little bit every day. Um, she wears her compression. And she was very, very conscious of looking after her health holistically, mm -hmm. eating well, resting, meditating, her being a yoga instructor as well. So she put all of those things together um, to make sure she has a balanced, healthy lifestyle, as well as doing the things specifically for that damaged lymphatic system. And she's been absolutely fine. I love it. I can really hear that she's practicing health care as opposed to wait until she's sick. And that's yes. what's missing, isn't it? That's what's missing. Yeah. I heard you saying there, the doctor said, come back when there's swelling or pain or whatever. And yeah. that's what people do. They go away and they don't look after themselves. They wait till they're sick and then go to the doctor. Yeah, yeah. It really, isn't it? You know, and that's the gap. So we really need to, and as we're growing older as well, our body is not as forgiven, but that doesn't mean that's not a reason. Aging is not a reason to be sick at all. We can live, uh, a friend of mine, Hans Parr, you know Hans, he, he always talks about, uh, living long and die die quick you yeah. know <laughs> long, life and then dying quick because you don't want to have the last 10 years of your life in pain you know no. so it's all about living a good quality of life so um so what so I heard that you're saying your mom does this every day so what's the significance about doing this every day like if she left that for a week or something what can happen really glad you asked that so there is um a very clever process in our body called anastomosis Okay. Many people might have heard of anastomosis due to uh, LVA surgery, which work, works on the same principle, <clears throat> but I'm going to go back to, um, in my world, what it means. Essentially, we have different drainage areas in our lymphatic system in the body, and we have watersheds that kind of separate those drainage areas. On a microscopic level, it looks like very tiny little vessels close to each other, but the fluid will always be moving away from the watershed and move towards the lymph nodes. That's what the body does naturally. Now, what we can do is encourage fluid. For example, if we have lymph nodes removed from under the arm here during breast cancer treatment, we can very gently encourage fluid across the watershed. Wouldn't normally do that by itself. We make the fluid go across there to lymph nodes on the other side that are ready to receive that fluid. And what happens because the, the vessels are so tiny and microscopic when the fluid starts passing through there and um, they actually start to grow together so you create a new drainage pathway in the body Never. so if you don't do that every day it just goes back to the way it was before you're not teaching the body something new you're every so often getting it moving out of the area but it's not staying that way this is the nuts and bolts of what i teach everybody and why i teach it because if you keep that pathway open, you only have to do a little bit every day. It's not rocket science. Everybody can learn this. And you can keep that pathway open to keep the fluid moving out of that damaged area and into an area that's able to cope with the fluid. Wow, that, that's why, why would we not want to teach every single person going through cancer about that? Yeah. And, and even if you're not going through cancer, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's a basic necessity of, of, of healthcare and, you know, yeah. you're giving your body a break because our bodies are working so hard. And I think our bodies are working harder than ever now before. And, you know, lots I think of so. have liver complaints and, you know, all the toxification organs, our liver is just overworked, you know, with all the toxins in our environment on top of obviously our cells have byproducts, but all the, the toxins in our environment are, are creams, you know, that we're putting on our yeah. skin, the, 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 the air quality in our homes. And we've been spending a lot of time in our homes in the last couple of years yes. and our home environment, the air, the air is uh, 10 times more toxic than outside. You know, so there's all of this, you know, and we can't get rid of all the bad things in our environment, but we can do an awful lot to reduce it. And then we can also help our lymph and help our body because yes. our body is so innately intelligent. Our body knows what to do. If we provide the right environment for our body, it knows what to do to correct itself. Yeah. 
stuff back in that home estate. Absolutely. And what Absolutely. you said about the, um, the, 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 um, the new pathways, it really reminded me of the brain, you know, and how we how we form habits and the neurotransmitters. And um, it, it, it sounds kind of like that as well. So, again, the innate intelligence of the body. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And just coming back to healthy people who have don't have this issue of lymph nodes having been removed or damaged by radiation we wouldn't necessarily be wanting to move fluid across a watershed however still super super important because if we have if we have chronic stress it changes the chemical balance in our immune system yeah. and actually can overload our lymphatic system and the lymph nodes can become blocked if you like or hardened they become fibrotic if you've been fighting off a, a bad infection, for example. Um, but stress has the same impact almost as a bad infection. Yeah, um, hormonal changes can put extra pressure on the body if somebody has a predisposition to having issues with the lymphatic system. So it's not necessarily that you might have one particular surgery or interference in the body. Sometimes the lymphatic system can get backed up, can get sluggish, can get slow, can get overloaded or overwhelmed. And that's why people can find it really hard to recover after an illness. I helped a couple of people recover after COVID, in fact, who came to me and said, I know I want to do the lymphatic drainage because I know it will help me recover faster from COVID. Mm. So and their energy levels came back really quickly and they felt better. So it's for every single body. And like you just said there, the body knows what to do. But sometimes we put so much pressure on it. Yeah, sometimes we it needs our help. It needs our physical help to either unblock things. We've got to unblock the drains again or um, get things flowing again or help the body to get this yeah. happening. It's if we so don't move our muscles, yeah, we've been so sitting in lockdown. Mm. If we are sitting in lockdown for two years or however long and we're not moving our muscles or you just have a sedentary lifestyle and you're not moving your muscles. We're all sitting down. How does the limb move? <laughs> the last yeah, two. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So uh, we need muscle pumping action to move lymphatic fluid around our body. We need deep diaphragmatic breathing, the movement of the diaphragm expanding and contracting to pump lymph around our body. And then sometimes we need to be doing the manual technique as well to get things moving around the body. Explain, Super the, important. Breathing. explain the breathing because people, you know, when you talk about diaphragmatic breathing, explain that to mm. people who understand okay. that. Super important. I, I talk about the breathing when it comes to relieving stress, winding down, helping people. Yeah at night time so this will be good for that as well so go ahead absolutely let me move the camera because as i said i really like visuals so um this is a vital part of yoga if you've ever done yoga you've already learned this but it's really really important for our lymphatic drainage system as well because when we have so this is imagine my hands are the diaphragm muscle here the diaphragm is a muscle that behaves very differently to, than other muscles in the body when it's at rest it kind of creates this concave shape here in the torso. So you can kind of visualize the shape of my lungs there on either side of the diaphragm. So when I breathe, I might just breathe very shallow. Most adults just breathe very shallow. The diaphragm's not moving very much, not much air coming in and out of the lungs, not yeah, much oxygen the getting in and out. The top of the chest. Yeah, exactly. So when we breathe right down to the diaphragm or we expand the diaphragm as much as possible, it goes out, it flattens out and expands. The belly expands. Look how much more space there is there where my lungs were before, the shape of my lungs. So that draws air into your lungs and fills the lungs with more oxygen. And then when you breathe out as much as possible, I always say kind of exhale forcefully for want of a better word, and almost pull the belly button back towards the spine a little bit to really expel the air out. You could also lean forward slightly to get all the air out as much as possible. And then the diaphragm goes back up to where it was before. So when we do that over and over, we get much more oxygen into the body. We wow. also exercise our diaphragm muscles, so it's going to be stronger. We expand our ribs, the intercostal muscles between the rib spaces, the lungs, everything. Imagine anybody after having COVID, how important it is for them to make sure they exercise their lungs that way. Yeah, absolutely. And I've taught a couple of people online that even just that one part, the breathing technique, someone came back and said to me, I was having a lot of trouble getting back to my walking and hiking. I've been practicing that breathing every day. It has really helped. So the right. lungs opened up again. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. And even like, <clears throat> you know, we don't we don't exercise the lungs and it does a huge job. It's holding this yeah. lungs and um 
you know, and, and we really need to expand the inter the intercostal muscles as well that we, we don't really work out. We don't really work out because we don't no. breathe properly at yeah. all and even like doing a massage in between the ribs I do this quite often myself and under the collarbone and all of that and uh, it can be quite tender it can be yes. quite tender all along there you know and and even underneath for the women as well underneath the the, the bra uh, the, underneath the boobs, absolutely they're yeah. really, really important I remember um a couple of years ago AD and I had a scare I had a lump on my breast <clears throat> and I went in and really, I got the mammogram and everything. That was a bloody scary thing that was, you know. Mm. Um, but all what it was was calcium, calcium build up in the tissues. So I learned all about K2 then, you know, for distributing around the body, getting it back into the bones and all of that. You know, uh, K2 is very, very important in your vitamin D3 and all of that. But um, but yeah, like, you know, helping to move that stuff out. And I, I massage when I'm in the shower, I massage my breasts even, you know, to, yeah. To, have moved that because you can and the nature of gravity as well you know and um, so that's really really important to look after that yeah. as well especially for the women but I just want to go back to exercise and movement a lot of people don't like exercise uh, I, I sometimes I just call it movement it's just a choice of words whatever me too <laughs> but we need to move don't we We need to move because can you reiterate that again because you know we our our circulatory system our heart is a big pump and that pumps the blood all around the body and yeah. the lymph lymph works alongside all our blood vessels. So the muscles, when we walk or when we move, the pump and action of the muscles is what pumps the lymph. Am I right in mm -hmm. saying that? And that's yeah. what yeah. And that's that's really that's like when I learned that, Aideen, I mean that's oh my God. So if I'm sitting sedentary, like you know, you your everything's gonna get backed up. Yeah, absolutely. I must send you on. I did a short video on five tips for doing lymphatic drainage at your desk. Wow. So I must send you that on as well to have a look at. It's really I, I, simple, five minutes maximum. Mm -hmm. And it is possible to move your, because even if you just do simple yoga stretches, desk yoga like this, you know, you're contracting, relaxing the muscles and you get the muscle pump movement that way. Any kind of movement, you know, simple, simple movements, get the muscles contracting, relaxing. Same with your feet and that gets everything moving. You don't have to do something really dramatic in order to move your body. I'm very much against the whole no pain, no gain yeah. thing. Yeah. We just need movement, like you say. We don't need to be bodybuilders. We don't need to be gymnasts. We need movement. We need to look after our bodies. I'm so glad you said that because I'm not a person who, I, I've never had a gym membership, right? <laughs> I love walking. Uh, I do look after my body. I love the hike and I love being out in nature. I love grounding myself. That's really, really important mm -hmm. as well, right? And all that EMF, EMF smog, that's another toxin, that's an invisible toxin people aren't aware yeah. of at your computers all day so it's really important to ground yourself as well and that actually has been shown to help with inflammation there's a really good mm -hmm. uh, documentary on youtube called uh, the earthing movie and then i think there's one called the grounded as well or the grounding or the grounded there's two two uh, films and, and it shows because inflammation is behind every every disease and again that's a build-up of the toxins and the lymph not being able to yeah to move. Um, there's something else i was going to ask you um about the lymph oh yeah so so you're going to give us that link we'll, i'll put that in the show notes for the people as well so i definitely yeah. uh, encourage people to listen to that i want to ask you really quickly as well so we're coming into the winter season and a lot of people with the colds and the flus and we have lymph in our face and in our sinuses as well so yes. can you explain to people i'm sure there's something that they can do to help uh you know all the congestion absolutely so the lymphatic system is a closed system more or less right so if you are moving your body generally speaking, it will have an impact on these sinus issues that you get. But you can do some specific things. And either with your hands or with, I sometimes recommend using a fluffy makeup brush because it's very gentle. And some people like to have a tool in their hand to do it and they don't want to drag the skin a lot. We get a lot of movement in the skin here. It's quite elastic. So where we could start is basically in the head and neck, we'd want to get everything moving towards the lymph nodes around the collarbone here. You mentioned that you massage the collarbone. So you can do that. Massage in here. Don't do it so that it hurts, but get in there and just kind of palpate, we call it, and pump those lymph nodes. Gentle as and then you been gentle. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Less is more. And I know that people don't believe that. It's very counterintuitive. But less is more because you don't want to squash the lymphatic vessels. You want to pull on the skin, pull on the skin to open the lymphatic vessels let go it goes back to where it was before is open it, close open skin. close it's not just exactly yeah, yeah. yeah if you go really deep you just flatten everything yeah so 
keep it gentle and we want to work in sections always you'll see tons of stuff for the lymphatic system online always talking about long sweeping strokes from the extremities towards the heart that's more for the circulatory system for the lymphatics forget all that we want to move towards the lymph nodes that's what we're concerned about where are the lymph nodes pump them get them ready to receive fluid then section by section so you're not trying to force fluid through the area a little bit at a time move this bit we stretch and release the skin stretch release stretch release stretch release then move to the next section stretch release if you get blocked congested ears i often have problems in this ear this is great for getting the drainage going around the ear then you could do all along the jawline similar technique find a way that's comfortable either your fluffy brush you just want to see the skin moving look mm -hmm. for a freckle or something stretch it let go the freckle goes back to where it was before so we do the same along the jawline always moving towards the side of the neck here and down towards those lymph nodes same then around here along the cheekbone under the eyes be super careful because the skin's very delicate there that's maybe where you'd want to use a makeup brush more than dragging the skin a lot stretch release stretch release all the time and then back down towards these lymph nodes here you can get your fingers and massage don't be afraid to get right in there and massage around the edge of the nose where you feel the pressure and you'll feel the relief you'll find the sweet spot when you feel that you get relief from it around here as well it could be right in the brow bone there as well and uh, maybe with the thumbs is a bit easier but get right in there to relieve the pressure just be careful you don't hurt yourself Perhaps when you're doing as well doesn't it yeah yeah and there's a point right at the back here the occipital bone which is amazing for relieving headaches just get your finger in there or a thumb and massage around there almost like you're kind of trying to get up under the edge of the skull great points for relieving pressure in the head yeah there's so much that people can do to to help themselves at home don't don't wait to you know going to the doctor and getting antihistamines and this and that well, this is it they're going to tell you to take antihistamines or spray something up your nose saline rinse is amazing for the sinuses as well you've just got to be careful not to overdo it uh, because the salt can upset the balance of the ph hmm. um but cleansing everything out of there is really really helpful to and don't do it at night because then when you lie down, some of the water could be stuck up there and then your ears are going to get blocked. <laughs> ah, so great tip. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. And uh, so, so work from the bottom up because uh, obviously yeah. you want to activate the, the nodes first. Exactly. Okay. And then do section at a time. Imagine that you just want to move a little bit at a time, much easier than it, it's better to easier to understand that with an arm. If you try and force all the fluid up the arm, it's a lot of fluid to move. Whereas if you just do a section at a time going towards the lymph nodes, get that bit moving first, go to the next section, get that moving much better. And that's a great, much more effective, a, a, a little brush or something like that for the face. Cause the skin on the face is very thin. It's a lot thinner than the rest of the body. So that's great. Yeah. Great, Cause I hear so many people suffering with congestion, sinuses and then the colds and flus and they're all blocked up with mucus and all this. So they're great. Yeah. Thank yeah. you sharing that with everybody i just want to we're going to finish up we're coming to the end but i just want to ask you aiden how do you work with people how can people contact you so that they can work with you sure so i'm working exclusively online at the moment um unless anyone would like to hop over to brazil i'd be more than happy to host you okay, um <laughs> yeah but i teach what i do is i teach people all of the home care techniques but not just that, I also have online yoga classes and I do online personal training and, and courses of online fitness classes with me to learn all of the stuff relevant to the lymphatic system that you can then put back into your own practice, your own routine. Um, so online, I also have two online courses that teaches all of the stuff together. About two hours is about the content of the course, self-study. Uh, one for primary lymphedema, one for secondary lymphedema, or you know, one for everybody that has a fully intact lymphatic system and wants to learn this stuff, and the other for those that have a damaged lymphatic system. So there are two options as well. Mm. Probably the easiest way for people to find me is my website, which is quite simple. It's www.mld.ie, so manuallymphaticdrainage.ie. Wow, how did you um, get the website name? That's brilliant. <laughs> I know, I just, I was lucky. 
I just went and said, right, I'm getting my website sorted. What names are available? I'm just going to try MLD.ie. Great, it's available. So that was it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's great. So you have lots of ways that people can contact you and, and work with you. Yes. Adi. So whether even if you're healthy and you want to stay healthy and have that good quality of life or unfortunately, if you've had uh, any kind of um, broken uh, lymphatic system through cancer or whatever else and Aideen look there's I, I was reading a study there a while ago and they say one in two men are going to have cancer in their lifetime and one in three women will have cancer in their lifetime as well and that's they're yeah. the numbers that we're looking at now currently in this day and age yeah so it's frightening you know and, and I'm sure and everybody listening here knows somebody if they haven't had cancer themselves yes. they know somebody um in their family or somebody close to them or whatever yeah. so it's it's, it's and- rough. Actually, this is another point I really like to touch on very, very quickly. There's tons of people out there that want to help other people, uh, but are inadvertently sharing information that's incorrect or that's not full. Yes. So I always say, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. So I need an army of people to help me get this information to the people that need it. Anybody out there that has an interest in helping others through their blogs or their websites or their podcasts, or if they are training people who have been through these conditions of the lymphatic system, if you are a yoga teacher who supports students who have had these issues as well, I really want to get in touch with all of those people to create an army of people to get the correct information to the people that need it. So if anybody's listening and that resonates, please do get in touch with me. Wow, you're a powerhouse, Aidy, and I'm, and you know I'm sure there'll be people reaching out to you because there's a lot of people out there that want to help, but alone we can't do it. And I think no. we have different strengths and different skills and connections that yes. can help make all this possible. So yeah. Aidy, I really admire you and just acknowledge you for all the work that you're doing in the world. We're going to wrap up now, um, but do send me over those links. I'll put them all in the show notes. But listen, Aidy, have a wonderful day and 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 keep up the, the work. You're, you're doing incredible work so talk to you soon all right thanks so much okay take care have a great day bye I do hope you are enjoying these conversations and to help me continue putting these videos and audio podcasts together, I do have an ask. I do need support to help me to keep bringing you knowledge and insights. There is a Patreon link, patreon.com forward slash empowering family health, or you can make a donation via PayPal. All the links are in the description and the pinned comment. You can do a one-off or you can do a monthly support. So I'd really appreciate that. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Take care.